Well, in my last video, I said... I'm going to just change the clutch, because it's horrible. I'll be able to look at the gear change as well on that, and the gear linkage after that. So, so, today's job is to change the clutch. Let's get on with it. Right, well, I've got up on the ramp. There's a few things I can do up here. To start with, we're going to disconnect the battery. Uh, and that's because... We need to get the starter motor out, which is right down there. Um, in the old days, we used to hang a rag over it so the connectors didn't touch anything. But we're not going to do that today. We're going to disconnect the battery properly and we can unhook the starter motor properly. Then there's a couple of bolts up here we can undo from the top. One there we can undo as well from the top. And there we can do from the top as well. And uh, we need to disconnect, disconnect the clutch cable. So we're going to get on with that straight away. Okay, while well, we're underneath it then, took off the reverse light switch. Uh, we can now get to the starter motor bolts that are there. There's three of them. There and then there's two bolts above it there and there and there. You can see them just about there. There and one there as well. So we're going to do them. The gear linkage is just a 30mm bolt there. And then there is a bolt here that's connected. Now I did notice from above that that bolt there that bolt there is actually loose so that's a, a thing I'm going to tighten up I have noticed while I've been under here I think I found the problem with my horrible gear linkage somebody's smashed into it and I don't know if you can get it on camera but it is actually leaning that way so I do have a replacement from another car so I will take that one off and replace it with another one that's less bent basically but that one is pretty bent um, but at least I found the problem with it so that's nice it's sorted right let's crack on under here Right, that's the gearbox out. As you can see, it's not a massive job. Give it a go yourself. Uh, a few things I did notice while I was under there. <coughs> this bolt here is the one that's supposed to hold the cradle. Uh, this bracket here, it's supposed to go through it, which it didn't. Uh, or it did go through it, but as you can see, it went through it. This nut is supposed to be on that side, so that it joins it together. Uh, this bracket was actually loose both the bolts were loose on it and that bolt up there was also loose so somebody's done the job and done a poor job of it basically so the uh, engine mount was loose this bolt as you can see is almost worn through there uh, it's definitely knackered the threads on it luckily enough the engine that I stripped off a while to make the engine jig it's got one of these bolts in it so I'll be able to use that bolt instead but really badly put back together again uh, hopefully that solves some of the problems as you can see I've got the gearbox hanging upside down uh, it is leaking a bit of oil there so I need to sort that out but this stand is actually loose this gearbox is now hanging in the drive shafts they had really really strong drive shafts back then I don't know why they don't have them anymore but 
you can actually hang the gearbox in the drive shafts without a problem so it is possible to do it i'm going to leave that here just as security uh, just to make sure that if the drive shafts do fall it doesn't go further than that so let's get the clutch disconnected now we'll have a look at that start off by comparing the friction plates that's the old friction plate uh, smooth very smooth and we'll compare it to the new one it's got these grooves here and that's there to lead the the friction material away this one has got absolutely nothing left of it so even right just there we can say that this is knackered <laughs> uh, we're looking as well these rivets here uh, I'll try and get a good shot of it there you can see how much there is left the friction material is left there towards the rivet head and if we compare it with the new one the same rivets it's probably two or three times the amount of the material there so that clutch knackered uh, the pressure plate it's got some slight grooves in it it's not too bad. I mean, we could use that again if we wanted to. Um, I'm not going to. It's part of the kit, so that one as well. Get rid of that. And then we've got the thrust bearing. Uh, it turns, you probably can't hear it, but it, it is worn. Uh, you can hear the roller bearings running around in it, so it's probably an accurate in that. Well, we've got a new one of them as well, so we'll be fitting that as well. So it was definitely time to change the clutch on this car, which is probably why it was biting so high because that clutch is knackered. So we'll get around to fitting this now then, we'll centre it and then we'll put it back on the car. Right, there's a couple of ways of centering the clutch. One of them is to use this fancy little tool. Um, they're pretty inexpensive actually, but basically what you've got is an adjustable end on that end. You can screw it off and adjust it. In the kit, there are loads of different sizes, but you want to choose the one that fits straight through the clutch and into the flywheel then you have this end that you just kind of screw it against it and that centers the clutch the clutch plate is now centered the other way to do it which is where we used to do it when i was a mechanic working at ford was to feel here and you can feel when the clutch and the spring plate there are level with each other and you feel it in all three holes to make sure it's level now it does work it's probably not the most reliable but it does work. This one is much easier with the tool. So get yourself a tool. They're like I said, they're not expensive, a few pounds and they're done. And it just centers it up straight away. Uh, these bolts, there is a torque for these bolts. I'll find out what it is and I'll put it up on the screen and I'll tighten the bolts up with the torque wrench just to make sure that it's done properly. All right, so I've got the gear linkages off and uh, we can see by the by the old one that it's leaning that way. So this is bent here somewhere. It's been taken for rally at some point. This is one of a different car that I've got and it's much more parallel there, straighter. So we'll put this one back in we'll put this one back in again and we'll get rid of that one. And that should make the gear change a lot easier.
Right, well that's the clutch done. Just giving it a quick test, just forward and backwards in the garage, but it's absolutely brilliant. It is uh, much, much better. The gear change is nice and smooth. The clutch is about the middle where it should be. Works absolutely perfectly. So that's a really, really good job. Quite happy with that. So subscribe and uh, keep watching for next films for more exciting installments, basically, of Alice back on the road. Thanks a lot and bye-bye.